Welcome to the extracts of The Sleep Prescription by Arik Prather. Seven days to unlocking your best rest. Sleep is super important, just like air, water, and food. We all need it to stay alive, but nowadays, sleeping well can be tricky. There are two main reasons why it's hard to get good sleep. First, our world today is super busy and fast. We have lots of things to do, and sleep often comes last on the list. Second, we sometimes make choices during the day that mess up our sleep later on. We might not even realize it. To fix this, we're going to be like scientists studying sleep. We'll learn about how to sleep better for a whole week. Each day, we'll talk about what can make our sleep not so great, and then we'll do some activities to help us sleep better. Are you ready to stop getting in your own way and start having awesome sleep? Let's do it! Day one, setting your body clock right. Different animals have different sleep habits. Giraffes sleep less than five hours, while lions need a lot, around 16 to 20 hours. Albatrosses, huge birds that fly for miles, can even dream while flying, and hippos can sleep underwater. Every living thing has its own unique sleep pattern. Humans are a bit dull in this regard. Most adults need seven to eight hours of sleep every night to feel their best. It seems straightforward, but it's getting harder to achieve because our sleep patterns are getting messed up. If you want to improve your sleep, you've probably heard about the circadian rhythm. It's like a boss clock that tells our body when to do stuff. Some of it comes from our genes, which is why some people wake up early and others stay up late. But this clock can also be changed by things around us. Our brains are always learning from what's happening around us, which affects our sleep. For example, when it's dark, our body makes melatonin to help us sleep, and when it's light, we release cortisol to wake up. Our body also notices our habits, like when we eat or when we go to bed. So for your first task, pick a time to wake up and stick to it every day for a week. It sounds easy, but it helps your body's clock work better, and that's the top trick to beat sleep problems. Day two, reducing stress. Have you ever had a night where you couldn't sleep well? It can make you feel nervous and jumpy the next day. Sleep and stress are connected in two important ways. Firstly, when our bodies get stressed, it can affect how well we sleep. But surprisingly, this doesn't always cause big problems. For regular daily stresses like family, work, or money issues, our bodies are pretty good at handling them. So even if you had a very stressful day, you can still get a good night's sleep. The second connection between stress and sleep is even more powerful. The quality of our sleep affects how we deal with stress. Studies show that when people don't sleep enough, they find things more stressful. When we're stressed during the day, we tend to make choices that harm us later. For example, drinking coffee in the afternoon even when we know it's a bad idea. We also choose unhealthy foods and argue with people more. But here's the good part. The sleep stress cycle gives us two chances to make things better. If we learn to manage our stress, we can sleep better. And when we sleep better, our stress goes down. You might be wondering how to do this. The task for day two is to take short breaks during the day to reduce stress. These can be five, 10, or 15 minutes long. You can read, meditate, or take a leisurely walk, whatever helps you relax and unwind. Day three, recharge your energy the right way. Imagine it's 3 p.m., and you're at your desk feeling tired. You might wonder if you didn't sleep enough last night or if your blood sugar is low. To keep going for the rest of the day, you might think about having a third cup of coffee. Does this sound like something you do? Feeling tired in the afternoon is normal for many people. It's part of our body's natural rhythm. When we wake up in the morning, we become more alert, reaching our peak alertness a few hours later. But in the early afternoon, our energy starts to go down, hitting its lowest point around 3 p.m. 
It goes up a bit in the evening before going down again as we get ready for sleep. Most people turn to caffeine like coffee when they feel this afternoon slump. Coffee is a very popular drink worldwide. People drink around 26,000 cups of coffee every second. But here's the good news. You don't have to give up your coffee to sleep better. The key is when you have it. Caffeine takes about 10 hours to leave your body completely, so try not to have it too late in the day. And there are other ways to beat the afternoon tiredness without affecting your sleep. When your body craves caffeine, it actually wants some movement, fresh air, or a change of scenery. So instead of going to the coffee machine on day three, take a short walk outside or do something different. Moving around will quickly boost your energy levels. Day four, dealing with worry and sleep problems. We humans are special because we can imagine things. It helps us succeed, but it also makes us anxious sometimes. Worry and thinking too much about things can be a problem, especially when we want to sleep. During the day, we often try to ignore our worries and move on quickly. But when we go to bed, those worries can bother us. This is called rumination, and it can stop us from falling asleep. The issue is that sleeping means letting go and relaxing, but worrying keeps our minds active. And the more we worry, the easier it becomes to keep worrying. But here's the good news. We can control our minds. There are things we can do during the day to sleep better at night. For today's exercise, set aside some time to worry on purpose. Choose a time that works for you, like 15 minutes. When the timer starts, let yourself worry about anything you want. Think about your problems or your to-do list. But when the time is up, stop and think calmly. If you start worrying at other times, tell yourself to wait for your worry time and let those thoughts go. This can help you sleep better and feel more relaxed. Day 5. Getting ready for sleep. When we begin to fall asleep, it might seem like a slow process. But in our brains, it's more like flipping a light switch. Melatonin, a chemical our bodies make, plays a big role in this. We've talked about how darkness helps make melatonin. The problem is, nowadays, we're surrounded by artificial light even when it's time for bed. Unlike our ancestors who used the sun's natural light, we use phones, tablets, and other gadgets. Research tells us that the blue light from screens can stop melatonin, just like sunlight does. This blue light has been linked to sleep problems, but it's not the only reason. The main issue is that our brains stay active. Whether we're watching exciting shows or working on our devices, our brains think it's time to be awake. This can make it really hard to sleep. So what can we do? We need a wind down. For today's task, create your own wind down routine. You can pick calming activities like reading or taking a warm bath. But there are rules. Start winding down about two hours before you want to sleep. And when the alarm rings, stop anything that wakes you up. No work, no social media. Use this time to relax and tell your brain it's time to sleep. Day six, preparing your brain for better sleep. These days, we often can't control our daily routines because they revolve around work, school, and other scheduled tasks. Our brains are always busy, taking in information, reacting to things, and predicting our needs. For sleep, our beds play a big role. They can signal to our bodies that it's time to sleep or keep us wide awake. Many people face a common problem. They feel tired before bedtime, but suddenly become alert once in bed. It's like a switch flips in their minds. This is called conditioned arousal. It happens when people do non-sleep activities in bed so much that their brains link the bed to being awake. On day one, we learned the first rule for better sleep. Pick a fixed wake-up time. Rule number two, which we'll tackle on day six, is this. Only get into bed when you're truly ready to sleep. We want your body to see your bed as a place for rest, not staying awake. To make this change, 
follow these simple steps. First, if you're not sleepy, don't force yourself into bed. Extend your wind down time if needed. Second, if you're in bed and can't sleep, get up and do a relaxing activity from your wind down routine. Return to bed when you feel sleepy again. Lastly, don't stress about it. Worrying about sleep can make it worse, so stay calm and give yourself time to adjust. Day 7, Staying Up Late to Improve Sleep What we talked about on day 6 helps in two ways. First, it teaches your body to link your bed with sleepiness. Second, it increases your sleep pressure. Think of this like blowing up a balloon. When you wake up, the balloon starts to fill with sleep pressure. When it's full, usually at bedtime, you feel sleepy. Sleep pressure is a big help against insomnia, so day seven focuses on sleep restriction. It means staying up very late if you're still struggling to sleep. Some people worry this will mean less sleep, but it means less time in bed. If you're in bed but not sleeping, it's not helping. For today's task, go to bed as late as you can. Keep this late bedtime for about a week. This lets sleep debt build up. By the end of the week, you'll feel tired at your wind down time. When you fall asleep faster and sleep better, slowly move your bedtime earlier. If you hit a point where it works well, that's your ideal sleep schedule. Final summary. Sleep is undeniably essential in our lives, yet it's becoming increasingly challenging to achieve. Our modern world and our daily decisions often work against our quest for a good night's rest. But here's the great news. Empowerment lies within our grasp. We can make choices and adopt behaviors that pave the way for a more rejuvenating sleep experience. In this summary, we've explored seven practices that can transform how you approach sleep, revitalizing your body, mind, and sleep environment. Remember, Everyone has the potential to enhance their sleep quality, and these newfound tools can be the key to unlocking it. If you're ready to take control of your sleep and embark on a journey towards better rest, consider diving into The Sleep Prescription by Arik Prather. It's a guide filled with actionable insights to help you achieve the sleep you truly deserve. Got feedback? We love to hear about our contents. Share your thoughts and book recommendations in the comments section below. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about the latest video. Thank you, and have a great day.